Today we're going to be checking out the Chronicle Collectibles Jurassic Park Breakout T-Rex Statue. This 1 20th scale statue features the female T-Rex as she roars in triumph after setting herself free from her pen. The statue stands at a whopping 24 inches long with a 16 inch long tail and 12 inches wide. So before we actually look at the T-Rex, let's have a look at the base that she comes with. The main bottom base has the muddied terrain in which the T-Rex will be emerging from the opened pen. You can even see where the statue will sit via the embossed or imprinted footprints of the T-Rex feet. There's two peg holes here in which the posts of the feet will sit into. The Jurassic Park logo is featured at the bottom corner in a nice raised elevation. Sculpted very nicely and painted equally so in a nice gold and then weathered wash to it. The back will have the posts in which the, the the fence post will sit in top of. And then if we flip it upside down, you've got the Chronicle Collectibles Jurassic Park Breakout T-Rex limited edition uh, out of 1,000 pieces. This is unit 451. You have a couple of also some felt feet in which hopefully you, when you put it on a surface, it will not scratch anything. Next, you have a couple of fence posts one of which has the connector wires in which the electrified fence will feed themselves through these, these little loop ringlets. Uh, then on the top, you've got the indicator light. These would be on in the movie, but because again, the T-Rex has broken through, uh, they are off. You've got a, the cord will connect to the back and I'll show you how that works in a second. That will just plug into the bottom uh, of the base. Uh, so you get that. And then you have a shorter and longer version of the fence complete with the wires that are connecting from the fence. Now, I want to stress this though, when I did get the T-Rex here, these are perfectly straight. No, these are not perfectly straight, but the fences themselves, the fence pieces are perfectly straight when you get them out of packaging. I've actually just been uh, uh, displaying these. I've actually put them in and started to manipulate the fence and then just have gone now back to the review. So I've straightened these back out, but they're certainly not to the same straightness as one would expect when you get this out of box. These will be completely flat. I went back to watch some of the film footage in which the T-Rex is breaking out of the pen. And I actually also went on to the YouTube channel for Chronicle Collectibles just to see how everything is placed for the fence. Um, one thing though is that uh, in the video, uh, the gentleman that was showing how to assemble the fence and this is basically what I'm going by in the way of uh, a fence assembly I'll also maybe put the link down below for the fence assembly So if you guys want to see how he does it from Chronicle, you can kind of compare notes to that uh, in his video he had indicated that the post can sit straight up now, I actually don't find that my post sits straight up. In fact, mine seems to want to lean more to an angle where I've noticed that maybe there might be, I don't know, some uh, additional material that's still left in the socket of the, of the hole. Mine sits actually so, more so to the left. And uh, again, if they do get a chance and maybe they do watch this video, I don't know, maybe they can let me know, but uh, Mine did not sit straight up. Uh, in his video, he's got it straight up and then he's got the other fence like this. Mine actually sits a little bit more to the side, slightly to an angle. Then we can go ahead and take the second part of the, the fence post. And it might actually be easier if you just, after all that, take the fence, the, the actual beams off altogether. Because what you need to do is you need to feed the fence. Let me just get this cord out of the way here. You wanna feed the fence through the eyelets of the connectors of the fence. And to do that, you can kind of do it just by holding everything together and then manually feeding everything through. You wanna start here. You could simply just spool each 
each fence through. But this gives you a good clean first starting point to which then you can add the, uh, the additional looplets and stuff like that. So we want to feed this through, feed it through all the individual eyelets. And then from there, you can attach those, the posts into the slots. Now again, mine sits a little on the angle rather than straight forward. Uh, but this is your starting point. Kind of want to get it to here first, and then you can do a little bit more manipulation after that. Now really what you want to be looking for is natural stress. No, not the natural stress that you may, may have over the course of a day, but you want the natural stress in which the posts of the fence have been pushed back. You don't want to just simply just loop wires all the way through. You want to, you want to give them a more natural look to it. So then what you want to do, or this is what I've done, and you can certainly do differently yourself, is once you've got them in a starting point, you can start manipulating each of the individual wires because all of these will bend. You want to start giving them a gradual bend. You want to give it as if the, the posts, let me spin around here, the posts have bent. So therefore all these, the fence wires, will also have bent backwards. So kind of with that in mind, manipulate each of those bends to a nice natural curve. And you just want to continue to do that. They don't all have to be exactly curved the same way, but what you want to stay away from is one thing I just kind of did here. You want to stay away from real stark bends. Kind of stick to more of a natural curvature of the way that that fence would warp as basically the whole thing has been bent forced as the female T-Rex has pushed her way through. You could spend a lot more time certainly on this, what I'm doing currently right now. But you want, what you want to get though is the look of having these warped. And again, being that they're, I like that they're wires, so you can kind of go back, kind of look at what you've done. Okay, you know what? Mm, I need to need to fix that a little bit more. And then again, like you can naturally just just work away at each individual curve until you have the desired look that you want. With an acceptable look, I mean, I I could do a little bit more to that, but I can always go back and just kind of touch it up. Uh, take your cord. It's this threading that comes from the top eyelet, and there's a there's a screw. There's a screw that actually sits, let me just show you, at the bottom of the pen, right there, there's a hole. Take the screw, and you want to plug that into this. It's a natural response that once you've pegged that in, this will become very taut, very tight. And with this basically being your guideline, go ahead and spin the fence back around. And we might even want to bring the fence a little further for this, for a little closer, bring the camera in there. Uh, what you want to then do is you want to feed these through. You want to be able to bend these. Again, there, there's some generous liberal freedom to these wires that you can bend them. But what you want to kind of do is spool them, feed them around. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Basically take each one of the wires and you want to give them a natural bend as well. Just kind of continue to feed them down. The look that you want to accomplish is having each one of these bent around, staying with the curvature of the wire of the cable here as basically your guideline. You can be a little bit more generous with this as well. Like with you imagine the the velocity in which the T-Rex has bent this, they're not all going to be natural curves. So in fact like this one here I've got a little bit more exaggerated. You continue to bend them. This one I think we're going to bend all the way around and it can even like run closer, closer inward here. But the whole time that you're doing it, you can 
go back once again and maybe we'll just bring these a little bit more forward and just bring these forward if you're still not a hundred percent certain you can also go and reference the source material I mean it's much easier to go it's very easy to go back and watch Jurassic Park it's a great movie you can go back to that original breakout scene but again we're just going to want to go and manipulate each of these wires just bend them around let this be your guideline See what we're doing on the other side here? I'm going to bring these wires around. And if you're feeling like you're not getting a natural curve, like if you feel like you're getting a little bit more of a sharp corner as opposed to a curve, find something that has a curl to it, like a, 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 a cylinder to it. Chronicles video. He indicated using like a screwdriver. I mean, I could stress that as well. Use use something that you could get like you got like a screwdriver or that you can or giant fingers. You want to get around the curvature. Using big words there, the curvature, and get a more comfortable looking curl. What you want to stay away from is again real sharp, sharp. I should say sharp bends there, and just keep going around until you're finished. A rather interesting thing also happens when you manage to get everything wired up. Now all of a sudden I've got a more secure fit and it seems like the posts have now have now elongated so I've got them almost parallel to one another. Uh, it could also be the fact that the wires feeding them through the way that I did. I've created now a support system to keep this in place. This sits perfectly now, which is actually funny. Putting it on its own, it sits on an angle. Uh, once I've now fed the wires and the fence wires through, it seems to actually sit perfectly straight. And at any given point, again, just go back. If you if you look at the footage, you know, you look at that breakout scene again, you feel like the fence maybe is a little bit more, a little bit more bent. You go in and kind of correct everything. But again, imagining this fence will bend. So, you know, you want to kind of keep it consistent with one another. So that one curve is almost of the same sort of curve as the one above it and the one below it. You want a consistent, a consistent shape kind of going through all the individual fence wires. Then we can go ahead and add the second post. That sits very easily into place. And what you need to do, or what you should do, is now take this side and match very similar to what you've got on this side. So take these individual wires. And again, if you need a guide, use a screwdriver or you can use something that has a cylindrical shape to it. And you can use that. If we were back in the 80s and 90s, I would say you could use like a developmental, the black car uh, containers that they use for developing film. You know, that's dating myself by saying that. But you want to, again, just bring these around. Bring them around. Warp them back behind. Let me show you what I'm doing here. Bring them back around and warp them behind. I'm doing this very quickly. But, I mean, you can, you can spend a good chunk of the afternoon. You can spend really as much time as you feel it's necessary until you've got the desired look that you want. I went back and I just did again some corrections to the fence. You might find yourself really, again, kind of going in and just correcting all these until you get the look that you really want. But what I, I wanted to really convey here was the just the frayed look to um, both, actually really both sides of the fence. The tops being a little bit more generous, I think, with their loops and getting a more tighter loop down below. But that's basically your finished look. Again, you know, between the way you you display yours and I display mine, uh, results will vary, but certainly that, I hope this helps kind of giving you some ideas to how to get everything looped through there. Now we can bring in the T-Rex. So the female T-Rex has two posts, a thinner post and a broader post. Feed the tail through first, the section that you've 
you've made now with the exposed, ripped open fence. And then line everything up, like so. And when you've got everything lined up, you can place down the T-Rex feet and you've got now the breakout T-Rex. The only thing you might want to do is again, just kind of correct, make sure everything is in place and especially go back and double check your wires. You don't really want to have anything staying in the way. There we go. You want to keep bringing these around and you might find you, yourself even like warping the fence a little bit more, but just kind of get everything out of the way because you want that T-Rex to sit nice and flat in the socket areas of the feet. And again, you want to just kind of keep correcting everything until you've got the look that you need. The finished statue not only is super impressive, but it's got a good substantial size to it as well. Uh, Chronicle Collectibles doesn't do things small. It seems like whenever they release these collectibles, they do them very large size. Um, so I think this is the kind of thing that you could put on display. And whenever you have company over, somebody's going to come downstairs or come into the room where you've got this guy on display. And uh, they're, they're going to be quite smitten by it. Uh, overall, I'm very happy with how the piece turned out. I would say one thing, though. Taken from the scene in which the T-Rex is coming through the pen, coming out of the pen, um, the, the paint that they applied, as detailed as it is, and we'll kind of look at some closer details of the, of the statue here, I do feel like it could have afforded a little bit of a, like a wet wash or like a varnish or something on it to kind of give the skin a sheen. Uh, it, it reads very much, very matte, very dry. And, and that again, that would be the only thing I would, I would probably have changed differently to it is by adding a little bit of a wet wash to it just so that the skin had a damp, just wet exterior to it. Needless to say, let's have a look at some of the close-up features. So getting a look at the T-Rex's head, I really like the sculpt. Yeah, it, it's done very, very well. A little bit of that wetness that I'm talking about here has been added to the, the tongue. I just wish it was added a little bit more to the rest of the body as well, a little bit more generous there. Uh, the sculpting on the teeth is done nicely too, not favoring just a singular color. Instead, they've gone in and uh, some of the little pink cues, little pink coloring here from the tongue, as well as some discoloration of the brown here is in the teeth. So I like that. They've added a little bit of highlighting here also to the eye to give it a little bit of life. Um, but I mean, really what you see from head to toe is a ton of speckling, uh, multiple different shades of color, mostly pre predominantly, I would say the coloring of the T-Rex is that of uh, like a beige color. Uh, and then as you get to the spine section of the, of the dinosaur, you get kind of get into more of the browns, the dark browns and, and colors of that. I think they did a great job on the skin where you've got almost like an elephant style of skin that's on the T-Rex here. I love how you've got that little bit of looseness here on the under gullet, but some of that wrinkling going on here, uh, leading then to the dinosaur's arms. Now they've concentrated the smaller dots and more the detail around the, the head section of the dinosaur. But as you can see, as it gets to the main belly and body of the dinosaur, uh, then you've got a more broader and almost more blurred sort of texturing and sort of airbrushing between the browns and the creams. There's the female T-Rex's legs and feet planted very firmly into the display base here. Again, lots of color, but uh, you know, if they had only incorporated some wetness, just a, a little bit of a sheen, especially on the claw portions here. You would imagine like this section right here would be kind of caked with mud. It doesn't really read that much in the, in the actual feet and toes. The back knuckle or back ankle portion of the foot. Yeah, just loads and loads of this airbrushing. I love how it's got the striping around the back and you've got, as I've already mentioned, you know, it kind of almost reminds me too of uh, like a frog texture where a frog would have varying degrees of splotches and blurred textured shapes uh, making up the body here. Very much kind of like this T-Rex here. 
the breakout T-Rex from Jurassic Park and Chronicle Collectibles turned out really good. Uh, it could have used maybe just a little bit darker depth to some of the color uh, production photos and when we saw these online the breakout T-Rex seemed to have a little bit more of a darker tone to it as well as what I had already mentioned a little bit of that wet varnish just to the surface of the skin would have really made all these additional details that I like so much really pop. At $549, I think it's worth it judging by just the size of the piece. Uh, additionally to that, the customization required for putting up the fence, maybe part of me feels like I wish that the fence was already constructed. You simply just post it back into the, the, the bottom base. But it does allow you, uh, as hopefully some, some artistic talent, I'll let you go in there and kind of just design the, the, uh, the fence to your liking. Uh, hopefully I did do a somewhat decent job with how the fence turned out. But yeah, overall, very happy with how the breakout T-Rex turned out. Uh, if you guys are interested in picking this up for yourself, I'll put the link down below to Chronicle Collectibles. Uh, like I said, it's estimated shipping for around the first quarter of 2017. So it should be available pretty much now. And uh, it's going to be for $549. So if you are a fan of Jurassic Park and a fan of this particular scene, this T-Rex will be right up your alley. Today, once again, we were checking out the Chronicle Collectibles. This was the Jurassic Park Breakout T-Rex. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe to this channel, uh, click that little subscribe button down below and you're good to go. And as well, if you didn't already know it, I've also had a look at some other Chronicle collectible pieces, including the Robocop 2 Kane, the Terror Dog, as well as the Ed 209. And there's going to be a playlist on this channel that you can head over and check out those older videos. And, you know, just in case you haven't had a chance to check those out already. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you next time.